Welcome to another massive edition of Beyond the Nest, episode 11, thanks to our friends at RT Edgar, some of the best real estate business in the region. Get around them if you're looking to sell your house or looking to rent. RT Edgar and the team will look after you. My name's Andy. I'm joined by, well, uh, for, for various other reasons this week, Lazarus returns. <laughs> Jackie boy, mate, you, you, uh, you, you've, had a, you've had a tough run over the last few weeks, mate, and you're, uh, you're barely just surviving. How are you hanging in there, mate? Yeah, I'm just, just hanging in there by the skin of my teeth, mate. I'm just, just clawing through um, what, what, what we call life, so. Yeah, <laughs> Here absolutely. We are, mate. We're, all guns firing for episode 11, mate. Take, take the peanuts out of your diet, mate. I know they're not oh, good for you. <laughs> no, they're not. I had the old nut allergy earlier in the week, so I'm feeling a bit a bit worse for wear, but what can you do? Oh, mate, that's why we call you Lazarus. Um, but Miss, <laughs> the Tommy Tommy, uh, Tommy Gawthorpe can have Mr. Hawk now, or I think Lazarus has yep. a little bit more substantial yep. meaning and presence in it. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a fan of it, actually. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll ride it for all it's worth, mate. Now, of course, we uh, we want to dedicate this podcast to our great mate. I don't know whether it's an alias or not, but we're, we're going to run with it. JJ <laughs> Bazaar, who conveniently sent us a message just five minutes prior to us recording this show, and, we said, and he said, uh, I quote, when is this week's podcast dropping this? This guys, I assume this week. So, JJ, well, this this show's for you, mate, because we we want to increase the fan base, and uh, and we we're, we're pumped to have you on board because the timing could not have been better. Exactly right, mate. It's good to see we've got a couple of top fans uh, eagerly awaiting the uh, the drop of the podcast every week. So yeah. Oh, absolutely, mate. Yeah. We've got them all over the country, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> which we uh, which we love and. Um, Look, it's uh, it's we'll, we'll look back. We'll start the show off uh, by looking back at last weekend's results, mate. And um, look, it was a, it was a funny weekend weather-wise. Uh, I looked on with great envy from up here in the north while I was in my shorts and my thongs and kick, kicking back on the deck, sipping a, a glass of something that tries to cool you down as opposed to warm you up um, while the snow was wrecking havoc all over uh, over the GGA. But before we talk about the week, this weekend's ga- or the last weekend's games, mate, uh, social media took fire and Wood and Hesker Absolutely. Football Netball Club were, were on the benefit, the, re- the massive receiving end of some great social media presence with a photo that went up of the snow. How good was it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We'll just run through some statistics here. So we've got the uh, obviously on this Sunday morning we had the uh, we had the juniors footy action. Uh, we had the photo posted of the snow. Obviously, we got two hundred and thirty likes, sixty three shares, and the photo itself reached over fifteen thousand people, uh, which is absolutely massive. So. It was a little bit of a viral moment for the Wooded Footy Club. We made it on a couple of little news pages. Um, they were on the SEN radio page as well, on Instagram, as well as um, the Stars Weekly Post and all, all that sort of good stuff. So, yeah, it was a very interesting week. ABC Goldwyn Murray had a the lot there. So the photos of the uh, of the footy oval and also the courts as well was uh, seemed to gain a bit of uh, a bit of traction on the uh, on the old internet. Oh, that is, that is simply amazing, mate. So no doubt putting the Wooden Esker Football Netball Club on the map, and I guess the uh, the, the beauty of it all, if, if you could say it is the beauty of it all, that we didn't have any teams playing, so those hard-working volunteers from the uh, the junior club uh, got the opportunity to sit back and just enjoy it and, uh, and work hard to keep warm and didn't have to um, worry about the results of any, uh, any of the teams sort of playing on the day. But certainly a lot of great effort for the hard-working volunteers to get down there at, for the juniors on uh, on a bizarre day uh, with snow, mate. It was uh, quite remarkable. It was. I was actually um, on my way back from uh, from the 21st during during the morning, roughly, but I can't remember what the time was exactly, but I was on the way back from the city, hadn't, hadn't slept um, halfway home and it just started snowing, so we just thought we'd make a little detour up to up to Mount Macedon, got about halfway up there and um, everyone's cars just started skidding around the joint so had to had to park the little Yaris and um, yeah we got snowed in for about 
four five hours, so we had to uh, had to tr- make the trek up to the Masson and CFA house and uh, kick back on the couch with a hot cup of tea and uh, yeah, try to stay as warm as we could. But it was a, it was definitely a moment. Um, I've never seen that much snow before in my life, locally at least. Um, and obviously the volunteers at the GTO um, were also witness to that to that display of snow, which is which was really great to to see. Obviously, a thing of great beauty as well. When you start seeing it snow, you just can't help but uh, just look over the skies and think, just just how bloody good is this? It's unreal, mate. especially especially around here. I haven't seen yet. Yeah. I think they said that was the most snowfall we've had since like 1986 or something like that. So. Oh, now, Not a bad effort. Now, now you've really upset me, mate. I, I got sick of looking at social media on Sunday because uh, <laughs> I, lo- I love the snow more than I love a nice uh, 25 degree day. I was very, very jealous. And, and hearing that it's the most snow, I, I have one winter where I leave the bloody state and yeah. we get the heaviest snow in that line. I'm absolutely filthy. I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted. Well, but... that's, that's bad karma for rubbing <laughs> in the. Uh... The suntan you've had the last couple of weeks, mate. Every podcast, so oh, well. that. Well, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to stick it up here because we got 27 degrees and pure sunshine <laughs> on Saturday. So while well, you're battling around whatever sub uh, cold pol- uh, polar conditions you're oh, dealing well, with down yeah. there, I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be again sitting back probably in some footy shorts. So I'll be wearing a little bit less on the day and uh, and, and tanning up on the balconies. Just, just to, you, just to prove you've it. got the old slip slop and slap going, mate. Oh, oh God, no. absolutely, absolutely, mate. Now uh, let's talk senior footy on the uh, and netball on the weekend as uh, the the mighty Hawks head down to Bloomdale, down to Diggers Rest on the weekend, and it, it wasn't quite the day that we were hoping for, but we knew that across the board we were facing some quality teams. Uh, let's start football. Under 19 and a half, a tough day at the office against Diggers Rest. Diggers Rest winning 9-6-60 to 4-11-35. Uh, individual goal kickers for uh, across the ball with uh, McCaskill, Fox, Cranjack and, uh, and Lockie Randall-Hewitt kicking goals. And Lockie Randall-Hewitt, the best on the ground for the Hawks. Uh, mate, their, their, their form has... It, it's been tough at times, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, they started the year so hot, and then, I don't know, when we, when we launched the podcast the, the week against Wallen, we sort of jinxed them into into that loss, and then, obviously, I had a little, I had a quick chat with Chucker on the weekend about that, um, about that upset against Wallen earlier in the year, and he, um, he was sort of in that mindset where, you know, the Wallen's record at the time didn't suggest the quality of their team, um, you know, they had a pretty bad record at that stage, but they've actually put up quite a good fight um, for the remainder of the year. They've hit a bit of form as well in themselves. But, yeah, um, it was definitely a tough day at the office. Had a few sore bodies. Um, Lockie Randall here, and he did I think he got, as you said, he got the best on ground performance. And he also came up with a bit of a heavy knock towards the end of the game there. So he's uh, got a bit, got some sore ribs. Um but he's a tough nut. He's always going to be pushing through injuries and um, putting his body on the line every week for for the mighty Hawks. So it's always good to see him uh, up and flying. It def- definitely is. Uh, the Hawks have had a, a pretty tough run since coming off back-to-back buys, uh, defeating Lansfield, but have lost their past two games to teams that uh, has sort of around them on the ladder. So when we dissect yep. the uh, the final game at home and away season, that will be of great interest, which we'll discuss Definitely. a little bit um, later on. Now the uh, reserves, um, an interesting game in, in itself, and we know that the, the Hawks have improved a lot this year. They did go down to Diggers Rest, 10-7, 67 to 5-5-35. Big Maxi Ambler in his milestone game kicked a couple of goals. Brandon Nichols best on ground. Uh, how did that game go down, mate? Yeah, I mean it was a it was a good effort, but once again it was a little bit of a well, not once again it was a bit of a disappointing day at the office for the for the Reggie's boys. Um, I think I wrote on the uh, on the full time scores that it was a it was definitely a good first half of footy, um, but we just couldn't back it up in the second half, which was a bit of disconcerting. But um, obviously we had that very late injury to, uh, to B Dog, Big Brown and Nichols. Um, so what happened there, mate? Um, oh, I'm not sure the exact the exact uh, little diagnosis. I do, I do know he ended up in hospital, so he was obviously stretched off with that with that knee pain. I think he uh, 
in the process of a tackle. Uh, I'm just going by what I've been told. In the process of a tackle, and I think he's sort of twisted. Had, knee didn't come with him, and then someone may have felt fallen or something like that. But he, yeah, definitely had that, that sharp pain, that shot from his knee down all the way up his leg. And he um, he thought he'd snapped his leg, um, from what I've been told. But there's uh, no breaks from what I'm aware of. Um, so I'm not sure what, uh, what the extremity of that injury is, but hopefully he's... Um, going to be all right. I don't know. I yeah, haven't, think... haven't spoken to him. I haven't really spoken to anyone about it since since the game, but I do know that there was another injury concern on at training last night in uh, in Big Perco. So, um, oh, yeah. word on the street is there's potential ACL there, but um, hopefully that's, um, once again, just cleared up and it's not as bad as what what's suspected. Obviously, we want him back for finals. Um and two knee injuries heading into the final game of the round is is definitely a bit of a sour note on what's been a pretty good season so far for the Reds, especially the two quality players. Yeah. Uh, to the senior footy side of things, the Hawks did go down the Diggers' rest by fifty points, thirteen nine eighty seven to five seven thirty seven. There was only seven points separating the sides at half time, which is a testament to the Hawks' improvement this year, uh, particularly in the later half of the season. But as we've discussed all year, mate, um, uh, the third quarter again got us stuck. Yeah, I was worried. I mean, going into half time, I was obviously, you know, pretty hyped and everyone was up and about um, heading into the second half. But I had in the back of my mind, I've always got that fear of that third quarter that's been sort of. Heckling us, particularly in the first half of the year, we did definitely um, adjust to it as of late. We've been taking it up to teams in the second half, and when they've challenged us, we've definitely still held our own. Um, but yeah, the third, they had a, a very large third quarter, just back to back goals, um, repeat inside 50s, and the back line was absolutely under siege all, all day long. So, Diggers Rest, uh, yeah, definitely sought ahead of our seniors boys in, in the wet and uh, we just couldn't close the gap in the last quarter. I guess a positive to take out of the game though is that we did we were we were able to win two quarters and one of the quarters that yeah. we did lose we didn't lose by that much anyway. The third quarter was essentially the difference seven two yep. to nothing, so forty six points to nothing. Mm. Um, and when consider the margin was fifty points, well you that's uh, yeah. that's not a bad effort. There was a there was a very favourable wind um, and there definitely was a bit of a scoring end to what, from what we were, what, what, it, what it seemed like from the sidelines. Um, so even though we can, we conceded seven goals two in the third quarter, the boys were still, you know, they were well under the, under the pump, and they did feel as though that, you know, if if, if Diggers could kick seven two, why couldn't we kick eight goals in the last quarter as well with the win? But um, obviously, the gap was too big to climb back from. Yeah, this thing had probably already been uh, taken out of the game. Let's turn our attention to the netballers and uh, the finals bound under-19s well and truly on their way. A dominating second term where they scored 19 goals to three to set up a 59 goal win, 68 to nine. Some great performers across the day, uh, including Gracie Reed and Amy Duff, who has been absolutely outstanding uh, in recent weeks as well. And we had a goal shooter that managed to score 56 from uh, 62. We, we love these percentages. Uh, one of the, I look at a stat like this, uh, and I know netballs are massive on it uh, from a coach's perspective. You look at it, 68 uh, goals from 76 attempts. So... If you're getting ninety yeah. percent with your shooters, and considering how bad the weather was on the weekend, I think as a coach you would be very, very happy with that. And I know Kelly would have been pretty pleased. Yeah, it's a massive stat, and um, a little sort of uh, forgotten hero that has been performing very well all year that we haven't really pointed out as much. But Gracie Reed has had a very, very consistent season. Um, she's been putting up some pretty big numbers throughout the year. You know, we've been talking about our, our Bowen girls, our Courtney Arverson, our, our Duffs and, and our Coggers. But Gracie Reed's had a very, very impressive season in her, in her own right. So we'll definitely give her a bit of a pump up after that massive performance again on the weekend. And I think the interest as well is that it is her first season at the club. And, exactly. uh, and she could easily take out the under-19s and A-grade senior, uh, best and fairest awards. She could be a dual champion by season's end. That'd be massive. That'd be a 
it's surely the first ever, wouldn't it? I think so, yeah. It'd, it'd be absolutely remarkable for the club. Yeah, that's and... right. You, you would have. Oh, look. I, I'd... If, if someone had won it, you'd know. You probably oh. would have live commentated it. You would have live streamed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we can add some definition to it. It will add some strength to it as well. Is that in the first season of the club, you take out two uh, best and fairest in a, yeah. in a club uh, at, at senior level is, is a remarkable thing. So she's got that. Uh, she's a handy recruit. Hopefully, we, uh, hopefully she stays around for a long, long time and enjoys her time at the club. Uh, C-grade's finals hopes copped a battering on the weekend and we did we did suspect this one could go either way, but uh, going down to Diggers Rest by nine goals, the margin extended at every change uh, to three, five, six, and eventually nine. 32 to 23. Alex McDonald, she scored 13 goals. Uh, Jazzy Gardner scored six, and Louise Miranda scored four. Uh, Monique Dean, Paige Michener, and Chloe Finch uh, around the around the courts in the, the uh, around the, the defence and the mid court certainly uh, were able to hold their heads high on the day. Yeah, we uh, we tipped this one to be. Uh I think we tipped it to be a pretty close one, and obviously yeah, that um, that came to fruition. So nine goals, very very close um, close ending there. But unfortunately, yeah, girls just couldn't couldn't get over the line, which is which is obviously um, not ideal heading into the last round of the of the of the year next week. And we'll talk about the ramifications of that result a, a little bit later on in the program. In B grade, uh, Diggers Rest fifty defeating the Hawks twenty six. The game was set up. Uh, but arguably in the second quarter with the uh, the Burroughs scoring 16 goals to four to lead by 23 goals and uh, and end up winning quite well. Emily Linder, after making her A-grade debut the, the previous week, scored 15 goals and Bonnie Thorson scored 11 goals. But as we spoke about before in the under-19s, shooting percentage is absolutely essential. And the girls, I know the pressure they're under, they were against a, a a good quality defence, but they scored at 62% as opposed to Diggers Rest, who scored a, a pretty moderate but impressive 74% in tough conditions. Yeah, well, that can be the difference, mate. Just a just a little bit of percentage difference, you know, in obviously your goal accuracy and um, and the results show. So, what yeah, can you do? Absolutely, just go, mate. Hit, hit the hit the training track on uh, Tuesday and Thursday, and um, sharpen up your skills for the next week. Yeah, you're absolutely spot on there, mate. And the final game uh, that we'll look at for uh, for A grade netball, it was Diggers Rest too strong, sixty eight to thirty two over the Hawks. Uh, the game really sort of blew away in the well second term again, eighteen goals to six to set up that victory. But you know we've hit the nail on the head. Shooting percentage is essential. Maddie Starasina could not have done a better job. She scored an incredible 24 from 24 at 100 percent to be the best shooter on the day. That is massive. It, exactly. It, right. That's you can't ask for better. Really, 24 goals in a in a was a 36 point loss. That's massive. Yeah, definitely. And she was up against Annika Shearer, uh, who is in GD, and she's an outstanding player. She plays VNL, and uh, she's a very quick and agile mover, and very good defence wise. So to be able to score. Uh, with such great accuracy, is yeah. is tremendous. Seventy seven percent is pretty good. Uh, Alex Watkins jumping into the team. Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say jumping into the team. She's been a star of the team. She's the Kale Hooker of the team. She did very well down back, trying to shut down uh, Monica Demofsky and Kat, Katie Dicker, who were uh, who were season campaigners and and quality shooters in their own right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be comparing anyone to. Uh any Essendon players at the moment after the, uh, <laughs> what you guys put up on the weekend. That was absolutely yeah. disgraceful. Oh, woeful, mate. Absolutely woeful. But look. Oh, 21 goals in a row, you can see. Just... Oh, we just take it one oh, week fine. at a time, mate. So we're... Uh, <laughs> we're, we're... You'd want you'd to wanna take it one week at a time because next week better be a very different different play style. <laughs> We're we're all about beating Collingwood in the final round, round mate. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll we will happily take that as it is quarter time here on the show. Thanks to our great mates at RT Edgar, and of course our uh, our special guest that we sort of dedicated the show to JJ Bazaar, which we think is an alias, but a uh, keen fan of the podcast. So we appreciate him jumping on board. Uh, we'll be back with the second term right after this to talk up some of the great things that are happening in the final round of the home and away season at the GGA. 
Hey, Gary, what time you call this? Yeah, the traffic was really bad. Oh, there's Steve-o. Okay, Steve. Morning. How was your weekend? Same old, same old. What'd you get up to? Not much. Are you okay, mate? Mateship is a four-letter word, and those four letters are are you okay? They're easy to say, and to some people, they can be life-changing. For more information, visit ruok.org.au. Yes, welcome back to Beyond the Nest. Thanks to our friends at RT Edgar. If you're looking to buy a house or rent your house out or looking to get into the property market and the rental market, RT Edgar in Wood End is the place to go to. They've done a magnificent job. I've, uh, I've had the privilege of uh, being a renter with them before. Their service was absolutely exceptional. And the best part was is that when we, uh, when we decided to leave them, due to the fact that we were actually going to build a house. They were genuinely disappointed and they gave uh, this, the, the girl that we were chatting to at the time, she gave us a hug and said, we're sad to see you go. Uh, that's the relationship that you want. My name's Andy. I'm joined by Lazarus, Jackie boy. Look, I'll tell you what, mate, get in the rental market, get in the, the house buying market. I tell you, I'm going to look after you, mate. Yeah, well, I'm still uh, still pretty keen on having my uh, my washing and my dinner cooked for me from, uh, from Mama Don and so... Um, I'll, I might hang around the hang around the pad for for a little bit longer until I uh, wander into the woods myself. <laughs> uh, enjoy it while you can, mate. Uh, I know when I first moved out of home, I met a lovely lady, and uh, and and the rest they say is history. So I was able to uh, flee the nest from Wood End, but I'm still uh, firmly entrenched in the heart of uh, heart of the club, even though I'm 1,500 kilometres away. Um, and uh, keeping a reminder, due to the beauty of recording, um, there are, the, the Riddle District Junior Football Netball League uh, Best and Fairest is going on as we speak, and to highlight the beauty of live uh, or live recording, we've had a couple of winners, mate, before we talk about what's happening this well. weekend. Um, we want to send a big congratulations to Brian Swayer from the Under 11s who took out the Best and Fairest Award in the uh, in 11C football. We also had the very talented and gifted Haley Alexander. Uh, she was the runner up in the Under 11 Division 1 netball Best and Fairest. And there was also magnificent. She had a Pristine season, absolute quality. Probably just a little bit stiff not to get over in there in the end, but uh, look, what a thought, sir. And uh, and the third one that we've got as we uh, as we go to recording the under thirteen division one netball Charlie Duff Titler or Titler. Uh, she was one of three runners up. In a joint runners up in the under eleven, under thirteen division one netball. So big congratulations to those. Uh, three runners uh, up. Yeah, three runners up, mate. So uh, I know the trophy cabinet, the trophy makers were going into overload when they saw oh, this one come sure. up. Would have had to lower the budget on the trophies this year, I reckon, with a couple of uh, joint runners up. Oh, I tell you what, they only go for the best of the best in the RDF and L over at Goldfield. They get the best trophies in the business, and we've oh, got. No, I've never won one of them, mate. So. Oh, look, you might end up winning <laughs> something up, soon. Yep, exactly. Well, you just He's got just a bit of a collection, doesn't he? Oh, just just pinch a few uh, few footy and basketball trophies or something like that from uh, from him, mate. He'll he'll look after you. <laughs> just engrave your names on them. His brother will win more than him anyway, so I'll have to pinch some from him. Oh well, there, there, there you go. There, you can, and maybe you will just uh, flog them off on eBay, and you can buy them for fifty cents or something, yeah, mate. Exactly <laughs> right. That's the best chance I've got. <laughs> now we don't have an in the, uh, an episode of the sit down uh, this week because we want to draw a lot of great interest on what yep. is happening this week at the GGO. Something that you're really proud of, mate, and something that's yep. uh, you've you've uh, you've been involved personally. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about what's going down, mate, and, and the work that we're going to see on what is going to happen on Saturday at Gilbert Gordon Oval. Yeah, so it's a bit of obviously a bit of late planning, uh, but we've got the uh, the men's mental health uh, awareness day this Saturday against uh, against Wallen at the GGO. So that's um, we're obviously going to be working closely with uh, with Lift for Life. So I've uh, been on the phone to to Patty's mum with that uh, throughout the week, and we've sort of been organising a little bit. Um, in regards to some mental health awareness with those guys, um, so there'll be plenty of uh, plenty of banners around, uh, plenty of flyers and, uh, and pamphlets being handed out throughout the day, 
Um, and that'll also be pumping up some future events with, uh, obviously, Mr. Spag, um, which is like a Mass and Rangers suicide prevention and awareness group. Mm-hmm. Um, they're obviously hosting the that suicide prevention walk that we slapped all over the social media, and that's on September the 8th. Correct. Um, so that'll be, um, that'll be pumped up throughout the day. We sort of uh, urge everyone to sort of get involved with that as much as we can. Um, in, still in the process of organising a, uh, a halftime clinic with uh, a next-gen sports academy, um, and that's created and run by AFL stars Tom Bell Chambers and Jake Malcolm. So hopefully we can get that ticked off on the checklist, um, get a few familiar faces around the club, which would be massive. Um, and obviously we've got the green armbands to represent mental health, um, and that'll be worn by the footy players and the netball players alike. Um, and that's just uh, obviously to sort of raise as much awareness as we can for for the causes that we'll be representing this week. Um, and the kickoff times have have been altered a little bit throughout the week. So for anyone wondering, um, listening to the kickoff times here, we've got the nine and a halves kicking off at twelve pm. Mm-hmm. We've got the reserves game, which is going to be absolutely massive against Warren, kicking off at 2 p.m. And then our 11A juniors premiership players uh, on the Sunday will be running the seniors out for their massive game against Warren at 4 p.m. So that's uh, definitely going to be a massive round of footy, and we hope as many people as we can rock up and uh, get around the uh, Men's Mental Health Awareness Day to sort of, you know, um, encourage as much uh, removal of this stigma as much as we can and um, hopefully we can sort of move forward to creating a, a healthy environment and a healthy uh, community um, around Woodend, which is what we're, all, what we're all looking towards. Now, mate, we know sporting clubs are a great vehicle for driving such key messages and the, and the Wooden Hesker Football Netball Club in, in partnership with, uh, with Annie Rollins who works in the mental health space uh, throughout the community have done a lot of great work in, in the area as well. It's an extremely important issue that needs to be addressed and the beauty about it, and you and I, have uh, we've been speaking about it over the last few weeks and uh, yeah. I think that the, the excellent thing is is that there hasn't been a big time frame for this to plan, but what, for, for me, uh, as, as sort of, you know, an outsider looking in, to see all the great work and the investment of the club has already put into this in such a short space of time goes to show just how committed the club is to supporting one another. There's a lot of great work done with the, uh, with the Towards Zero campaign, but particularly in the mental health space in the short period of time that you've been able to get this, I think it is a testament to yourself, or not, not, not only yourself, but also the club to go, hey, we need to get behind this. And the fact you're getting the women on board as well, I, I think it's a testament. I tip my hat off to you guys for what you've been able to achieve and, and raising a lot of awareness. And, and what a way to finish the home and away season at the GGO, a marquee game against the Wallen. It's, it, it's, a, it's a great way to sort of head into the finals uh, for the competition, but producing a great message. I, th- I think it's a great way to, to cement the Winnihesca Football Netball Club as, as a, one of the prime movers in the mental health space. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's, it's not only just about, you know, sort of pumping the club up and finding some success with the club, but the most important part about it is obviously we're just trying to raise awareness for, for all the causes that we represent throughout the year. In the, you know, we've got the Veterans Day that was raising awareness for our, for our courageous and brave veterans that have served us and allowed us to play footy um, on the grounds that we play on. Obviously, we had that Towards Zero campaign. We had many others. Had a lot of with Pauline Neal, so that's Patty Grady's mum. She's organised, you know, the mental health courses throughout the year. And now, obviously, to, to cap the round off, we've got the men's mental health awareness day, which is, um, yeah, as you said, definitely a great way to cap the season off. And um, we've had we've definitely had a big year with some with some major sponsors and, and campaigns that we've been getting behind. So yeah, definitely been a, a testament to the club as a whole. And what we probably need to drive the message home as well is that for for a lot of players this weekend, that's going to be the last time they they walk onto the field, uh, maybe as the club, but, but but particularly for the for the rest of the year. Um, I know, unfortunately, in the RDFNL family, it has been in the off season where mental health has be, has been a big struggle. 
So yeah. what we really want to urge for those who, are, who may not be playing finals, uh, may not be necessarily be participating, is that use your, use your connections, use your friends, use, your, use the camaraderie at the Wooden Hesker Football Netball Club as a resource to look after yourself. I know, I know particularly, um, I know the Masters uh, have, have done a lot of work in, in this space. It's hard uh, when, when the, the, a lot of guys... They look forward to going to to training and, and and playing games because that's their outlet outlet to to use the to to use the words of, of Bushy just to escape the shit that's going on in their lives. But what's yeah. important here is w- w- the preseason is still a great opportunity. You, you, you're not going to see that. You don't have to wait until next season to go and uh, you know have a hit of golf or, or go and have a coffee or or whatever it is. Whatever happens after this weekend, if you if you're going through some tough times. Get on to your mates that are part of the club because they're not they're not, they're not your you know they're not just your, your football netball club mates they they are your mates for life. Yeah, for sure. And it's the club the, the season might be over next week, but the but the you know the club's still very much wide open for everyone and and the community and, and players and and the committee and and just you know just locals that that want to reach out and stuff like that. The club's always. You know, we've always got our arms open for anyone that wants to get involved or they want to speak up and whatnot. So, yeah, the season's over, but the club's very much open. Yeah, exactly. You only have to speak to uh, to people during the committee or, or who are on the committee. Uh, the the hard, work's, hard work is only just beginning, and that's that's for oh, 2020. Absolutely. So uh, we've already locked in. We've already locked in sovereign financial. They're locked in for 2020, um, and obviously, yeah, we've done a, a lot of great work. Um, alongside you um, and obviously Pods and EJ and all the other guys that are involved and the, and the women as well. So it's been a great team effort this year and hopefully we can uh, cap it off next week and look back on a, a massive season down the nest. It certainly, uh, it's, it's, it certainly will, mate. And, and, and probably by default we've we've created our own edition of the sit-down because we are talking mental health. We are talking about bringing the community together and the activities that is happening on the weekend, it is about uniting the the, the community together. And what we've seen, uh, I think we, we see it last week, mate, uh, on, on the top of Coles, we did see a banner showing the hashtag three clubs, one community. That is a brand that is uh, that sells itself, and and we're seeing such a united community from all age groups. It's it's quite a remarkable thing that that really hasn't been achieved in many communities around the region. This is a, a big message that we're trying to get out that that unites everyone together. Yeah, exactly. We've been using that hashtag all year alongside, obviously, building the nest as well, which has been another massive a massive goal. We want to build the club. We want to build the the community and open the doors to, to not only the footy players and the netball players but to the to the to the community as a whole. So yeah. We're definitely taking small steps, um, but we are also achieving giant leaps, um, in the, in a philosophical sense. So yeah, it's been a massive year. Sensational, mate. All thanks to our friends at RT Ed, Ed, Edgar over in Woodend, doing a magnificent job as always. That's the second quarter. Coming up next, we're going to be talking up and building up our Masters who head into their final game of their 2019 campaign. And we're also going to be talking up our junior grand finalists who run out, run out onto the footy field and the court this weekend. We'll be back with more right after this. Last year, safety barriers were hit more than 3,200 times. When a safety barrier is hit, it catches your vehicle like a net, slows you down and prevents you from hitting a tree or oncoming traffic, saving your life and potentially others. And I should know, because that's exactly how it saved mine. Safety barriers save lives getting us towards zero. Welcome back to Beyond the Nest. My name is Genji. I'm joined by the great man, of course, as always, Lazarus, the uh, great man, Jackie Boy. Thanks to our friends at RT and Edgar. Well, mate, the Masters, they had a, a cracker of a barbecue down at Bunnings on oh. the weekend, and I know a lot of people got down there and got involved and enjoyed a snag or two. Absolutely, mate. I had a, had a look at some of the flicks before. It looked like it uh, was quite successful. 
Yeah, absolutely, mate. A lot of banter, a lot of good times. Um, now, the Masters, they did have their final uh, training run on the Wednesday night. A lot of great numbers out there, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of excitement, which is, uh, which is great. They've, uh, they always do a magnificent job just building a, a great culture down there. The guys do head off to Bendigo for their final game of the year, which is a White Hills Rec Reserve down at Scott Street in Bendigo. Get there if if you can get along. Check it out. I know with the later starts of the senior games, it's going to make it a little bit harder to to get down there. But if you make sure you uh you, you get behind them, supportive. We get a few senior supporters out there, which is uh which is awesome. Um, and we and we'll we'll talk up uh talk up finals happening as as we mentioned during the uh, recording. We've had some great success with our uh, our juniors at the riddle presentation night which we'll we'll give a bit of a wrap up by the time the show comes to an end but we have our ladies that will be playing finals this weekend which is pretty exciting our uh, our under 18s uh, we don't have the fixtures in front of us at the moment but they will be playing this weekend it's going to be an exciting time for them not bad for a, uh, a group of girls that got together for the first time this year yeah yeah definitely it's been a great effort for the girls and it's obviously good to uh, enrich the club with uh, with more teams and uh, a bit more depth as well. So it's good to see those girls uh, firing. Yeah, it definitely is, mate. Uh, so we wish wish the girls all the best. And then, of course, we've got our uh, our juniors. That as as you as you mentioned earlier, the under eleven A's are going to be recognised on Saturday at four o'clock. So get your, get the cameras out there and take a few photos of a potential premiership winning team. Uh, the guys do take on Rupertswood, and, um, and that promises to be a, an exciting affair uh, on on the day. And I'll uh, I'll just check out the time it sort of goes across. But mate, we always love to be Rupertswood. Every time we get a chance to to, to take him down, the Sharks, uh, we thrive off it. So. The boys will be playing out on the main oval at 9:45 a.m. to uh, for the second game of the day. So the two superstar uh, teams there. Um, it's been a fitting year for both sides, who finished one and two, and the Hawks uh, are go- looking to go back to back. They've averaged more than six goals in attack across the season and conceded less than one goal a game, so they're looking pretty good. Uh, Rupert's would are Rupert's would are a little bit behind on that one there. Um, but the, the star we're keeping an eye out for, mate, is the great man, Alex Gray. He scored 29 goals this year. He's been absolutely on fire. Um, oh, You cannot cannot get much better than what he's been running around. But these guys met in the second semi-final over at Boardman Reserve. The Hawks got up by five points and a pretty tough one. It was 17-12. So, mate, this one's going to go down to the wire. 11 A's, it's the best of the best. Uh, and with our man, who's uh, who's winning best and fairest, like it's a Sunday afternoon training run. Um, the and, and this is out the beauty of live radio, mate. So I've forgotten his name. Um, he did, did take out the eleven A's best and fairest. Oh, look, uh, it's uh, oh look, just just sack me. Like this is this is absolutely poor form. Uh, <laughs> oh, he got he got he got a pump up earlier in the podcast. Mate, yeah, exactly. So yeah, Brian. His name his name was Jobs. We'll just call him the little blonde the little blonde head kid. Yeah, the little blonde head kid, <laughs> Brian Sway. He'll uh, he'll get. Actually, no, but he's, he's in the under 11 C's. Look, mate, I'm, I'm in all sorts of good form here. No, didn't have anyone in 11 A's. No, it was a great team effort throughout the year. <laughs> um, but, look, it's, it's exciting. We are long. We are long. Oh, we are, mate. Uh, no, we don't, we don't edit here. We, <laughs> what you hear is what you get. 9.45 start over at Romsey Park. The guys are going back-to-back. They, uh, this playing group had a, had a great win last year. I don't think they were expected to win that one, and they did in, uh, in tough, snowy conditions. Looking magnificent. Um, now let's turn our attention to the under seventeen Division One netballers. A terrific season they've had. Uh, this game launches into action at three p.m. It's the Hawks. It's the rookies. It's the Hawks who have had an undefeated season under Cali Duff. This is a this is a machine that just looks doesn't look like stopping anytime soon. A remarkable uh, quality squad. This these group of girls are. Yeah, it's, it's a massive performance, and we've always been. We've talked about it week in and week out. The youth at the Wooden Heskett Football Netball Club is absolutely unbelievable. You, you cannot fault it, mate. And from what we've seen, these group of girls deliver it has, has been phenomenal. And we've seen them also step up to under 19s. So what yeah, they've exactly. delivered on match days uh, on this, they've 
they basically use Saturday as their chance to sort of warm up um, to prepare for their uh, for their under seventeen duty. So quality team out there. The last time these two teams met was in the semi finals. The, the Hawks did get up thirty six to thirty. They've got the fa- close ones. They're, they're definitely the close ones. They're, they're not afraid of the close ones. I'm looking at them going all the way this year. They've just got the form. And as we've spoken about across the year, and we've talked about this group, the 17s have been absolute quality. Uh, the 19s have had an outstanding year. They're going to play deep in the finals this year. There's no doubt about it. They'll, they'll likely play off in, in another grand final. These group of girls coming up from the 17s, a lot of these girls are going to go up next year. So the feeding team that we've got, so you, you can really measure the netball side. So the 19s team will be great next year, judged by the yeah. performance of this 17 side, who also, yeah, sure. they, they, won the, they won the flag last year as well. So the group of girls that have stepped up from the premiership team last year are making uh, great waves up at the, uh, at the top level, so it's uh, it's absolutely yeah. magnificent. And that, that obviously continues all the way up to, to A grade as they progress through their through their netball careers. So yeah, and it's just hopefully from what we've seen the last few years, it's just continuously it's just a cycle of young guns that we've got through the netball and the junior footy as well. Um, that just establishes a really solid core uh, at the heart of the Woodend Football Club, which is absolutely well, it's very promising, obviously, but. It's really exciting more than anything. Oh, you're spot on, mate. The buy-in that the volunteers and the players have had from the, the juniors and the seniors is incredible. And, and that's why we're really pushing this three clubs, one community thing because we, yeah, want to see, sure. we want to see people feel the comfort of getting involved on, uh, on Sundays but also getting involved on the Saturdays and being part of the junior and the senior program and, and looking at ways to improve it and, and get greater talent in there, get access to, to greater playing and coaching opportunities. There's so much depth that's, that's coming through. It is frightening. Exactly right. It's a, I'm sure you're very tempted to, uh, to head, back, head back down this way uh, next year, mate, because next season's going to be absolutely massive. Oh. Best. I've, got a, I've got a good feeling about it. I oh, know, mate. I've, uh, I've, I've tempted the idea to Jess. I said, look, we, we could ditch the sun up here for some great success down at the Hawks. Exactly. I want to be a part just of it. A, She's a 12-month holiday. It's absolutely. Fantastic. She is thinking about it. It's crossed her mind, even for a split second, mate. So, yeah, just... We'll be able to, not, only will, will, not only will we be able to do podcasts, but we'll be able to do live podcasts with, with video as well. If we're, uh, if we're in person, we'll sit at a desk somewhere and we'll whip up a, a massive podcast. Uh, we'll just talk for hours, mate. Absolutely, people will. Uh, they'll, they'll be all over it. We'll, we'll get record, record, record uh, <laughs> listeners, mate, and our sponsors will be getting for, massive. For all the wrong reasons, no doubt, but never mind. Absolutely, mate. <laughs> it is. It is three quarter time here on the show. Coming up next, we uh, we're talking about the ultimate grudge match. We're talking about the opponent that started it all going back uh, 10, 11 weeks ago when we did our first podcast, and we will give a handy reminder exactly what happened that caused the controversy uh, in week one of the show that set up exactly the chaos, the rivalry that these two clubs have built. Wood and Heskin and Wallen. We'll be talking about the senior games right after this. Peter, you're struggling. You're letting the team down. I mean, you must know what they think of you. Frankly, you're just not good enough. You are a failure. Pete. Hi, sorry about the last-minute catch-up. So there's this job I want your input on. It's very similar to the one we have just completed. What you're thinking isn't what they're thinking. Visit Beyond Blue to start a life beyond anxiety. Welcome back to the final quarter of Beyond the Nest. Thanks to our friends at RT and Edgar. If you're looking to get into the rental and the property market, the buying market, make sure you jump into RT Edgar just on our high street. They will look after you. They looked after me. Could not talk up them any better than any real estate agent I have worked with. I would have loved to have gone with them when we rented our house out of Digger's Rest, but... Um, look, circumstances didn't uh, didn't allow that way, and we're disappointed with I've been ruining that ever since. But uh, Jackie boy, we've got some big, some 
live updates. Oh, oh, oh. Live updates, particularly if you're listening to this after Wednesday night. Uh, a big congratulations to under 15 Division 1 Best and Fairest winner Jessica Martin from Woodend. Dynamic season for the young Hawk as, uh, has taken out the best and fairest. So a big congratulations to her. Uh, we've been up to date with keeping it up, uh, keeping the social media running. So if we're running a little bit low on that one, it's because we're doing, we're, we're keeping this, oh, we're keeping this action going. It's Hawk, it's, it is Hawk season at the moment. Exactly now, right. now let's it's talk up, season. let's, let's talk up the, the rivalry with the mighty Wallen Football Netball Club. Dating back to episode one, mate, we've mentioned this story numerous times and we know there is so much riding on the line with this game of under 19 and a half football. It's Wood and Heskett v Wallen. What exactly did we say on episode one and what exactly did you hear? Yeah, so we, as we all know, there's been a, there's been a bad blood between uh, Wood and Wallen, uh, whether we've... Uh, whether we've generated that or it is genuinely there, but um, we did uh, we did go into the nine and a half preview against uh, Wallen week one of the podcast. We said that um, we said that it was going to be an easy win for the for the Wooden Boys, and that uh, it was just going to be a quote percentage boosting win. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we lost. We lost convincingly, actually. So. Obviously, the uh, the Wallen boys throughout the week tuned into the podcast and heard heard uh, the uh, insulting words that we uh, that we displayed on the podcast, um, and they actually said that they used it as motivation at training, pre game, and uh, during the build up to the game to to allow them to smash our nineteen boys um, off the back of some bad comments that we made. So. Yeah, there's oh. definitely a bit of bad blood hey, this week, mate. Look, if you got a stimulator rivalry, mate, you're gonna plant the seed, it's gonna start on your start on the podcast and the turnaround of interest in thirty six hours, mate, was quite phenomenal. Um, but I noticed you, you you did have a few words sort of spoken you a bit behind the scenes to say, Come on, oh, you yeah. can't do that anymore. Um, yeah. But but if if the boys had it got up, I don't think anything would have been said of it. Exactly right, mate. I mean, I was just trying to order a bloody hot dog at the canteen, and you know, I overheard the young, the young fellas talking about these, uh, these twats on a, on the Woodham podcast, talking some bonkers about the the Wallen Footy Club. But um, nah, they're they're a great club. Um, they're obviously doing very well with their social media as well. So um, we definitely look forward to the to the clash this weekend. But. Um, we do want a bit of payback, I would have thought, Andy. Oh, yeah, absolutely spot on there, mate. Now, um, it's going to be a very interesting game uh, this weekend because there's there's a fair bit riding on it with the uh, with the results. Um, and I, I'm not exactly sure, given the state of the competition, I think we do have a top six, um, which, would, which, would be, uh, which would be fascinating. Uh, but there's so much that can happen this weekend that it is uh, it's it's quite crazy. If the Hawks win, they could potentially move into second spot on the ladder. That's yep. just this how is, big this, this is. This is obviously still not in the half, correct? Absolutely correct, mate. Uh, yep. So uh, despite the rough run that uh, the boys have sort of had in recent weeks, um, I'm dissecting this on the fly. I don't think it's going to happen because Lansfield... Diggers Rest currently sit in second position on the ladder, and Lansfield do play that side. So, and they obviously just beat us last week. So. Correct. Uh, so Diggers Rest are going to win that one, you, you would think. Uh, Riddle play Melton Centrals. Um, Melton Centrals did beat us fairly recently, and we've done all right this year um, against Riddle. I can't remember if we beat them or not, but it was, I think it was a pretty pretty good game anyway. Um, now if, if, if it's a top six, regardless of what happens, if, uh, if Wallen win... Uh, Wallen and the Hawks play off in week one of the finals, which I'm betting that's probably what's going to happen anyway. However, if if it's a top six, Centrals beat uh, Riddle and the Hawks do beat Wallen, then it will be Riddle and Wallen uh, in the second elimination. It'll be the Hawks and Centrals in the first elimination, which would mean that should the Hawks win that elimination final, then they go on to play the winner of Rupert's Wooden Diggers for a spot in the grand final. Now, we're hoping for a top six. We're hoping that eventuates. So we're hoping for a couple of things here. We want the Hawks to, obviously, we want them to win. Percentage, if Wallen's listening, percentage doesn't matter here. We just want to win. 
and we want centrals who beat us pretty comprehensively a couple of weeks ago. We want centrals to beat Riddle. Uh, doesn't matter by how much, but we just want them to win. And then that means we, um, we play centrals who we want to lose the following week for a chance for us to progress in the uh, second semi final. So there's a fair bit happening, mate, uh, with this particular game. Yeah, some uh, again quality work from from Mr. Statman Yendi. <laughs> always, always providing some very uh, complex little uh, little brackets there. So, uh, providing everyone with uh, the in depth the in depth news and predictions moving forward. So, if anyone's listening, yeah. uh, obviously mark that in your calendars because Yendi is the Statman. Uh, and look. And, and, and on behalf of uh, the, uh, the team here on the podcast, we just hope that the Wallen Football Netball Club, uh, particularly under nine and a half, just have a wonderful day. Enjoy their footy. Enjoy their time at the GGO. Enjoy the hospitality. Um, and feel satisfied on the scoreboard that even if you didn't win, you tried your best. No, they're a magnificent club. You <laughs> <laughs> stir in the pot again. Isn't it? Absolutely, mate. No, I've... Uh... been hot water the last time and you're going to do it again. <laughs> you're, you're safe up in Queensland I'm down here copping all the flack for what we say so I'll have the, I'll have the red dot between my eyes this week absolutely mate I'm, I'm, I'm setting you up mate you've come back from a few things uh, impossible over yeah, the last couple right. of weeks mate, I am Lazarus after all mate. absolutely I'll, I'll uh, I've got a lot of great mates down along the uh, Football Netball Club. I have uh, a lot of lifetime friends down there and love the work they do. So uh, we know it's all set in, uh, in, in good taste. Now let's look ahead to the reserves this weekend because there is so much happening here. I, I can't even keep my finger on the pulse here. Um, the Hawks would be hoping for a double chance. Uh, it's not going to... It, it would very much rely on a miracle. So the Hawks sitting in fourth position do take on undefeated ladder leaders Wallen under, uh, under, who have clearly the best side in the competition by the length of the Flemington Strait. They've got an incredible average. I think they average 130 points per game. No one can get anywhere near them. Um, they didn't, didn't win the premiership last year. They'll be disappointed with that. They only kicked one goal and they got... Uh, taken down by diggers, so they've taken them every game like it's a grand final since then. Uh, the Hawks just want to be competitive, sit in fourth position. It looks like uh, the Hawks will potentially play the winner of Riddle and Romsey in week one of the finals uh, in the second elimination final. So Riddle and, Riddle and Romsey currently play each other at the moment. Uh, Romsey win... Uh, even by a point, they go on the same amount of points as Riddle, but there is less than 4% uh, on the percentage front that separates the two. So there's, if basically Romsey win by maybe four goals, that might swing it to them going up to uh, to face us, uh, which I think we prefer because we've got a generally good yep. record against the against the Redbacks and they're a quality yep. side as well. Um, so, look, we just want to be competitive, but how do you see this one going down, mate? Well, I mean, all year, even though Wallen have the better record, we always sort of went, went in with this with this perception that Diggers Rest were the, were the number one contenders for the flag. Um, just based on the way that we that they played against us, that's all we can really go by. Um, earlier in the year, we were Diggers. It seemed as though they had more control around the ground than, than Wallen did, personally. Their skills were a bit sharper. Um but obviously, you know, a few weeks is a long time in footy and Wallen, um, as you said, they've taken every game like a grand final in the last few weeks. So um, hopefully it's a bit of a, uh, hopefully they come to this ground, uh, this game, so we're feeling a little under the weather and uh, we can catch them by surprise because uh, it is going to be a massive week of footy. And I know the, the Reggie's boys in particular, uh, obviously seeing that we're heading into a finals campaign, they're very eager to, to have a massive week of footy, seeing that it's the first sort of twilight round of the year. Um, and uh, hope, fingers crossed that we can get a few a few stars back into the side from injury, in, uh, particularly in uh, in Big Berg. So hopefully he's, uh, he's hammy's uh, healed up nicely, but um, I'm not going to have any guarantees. I'm not entirely sure if he's playing this weekend, but I did know that it was a massive possibility. So, uh, sounds like a good synopsis there, mate. Uh, again, it's just about being competitive, but it does look like um, R- Rupert's would do play Rupert's uh, R- Rock Bank, and uh, Rock Bank would have to 
have to have a magnificent win to take down yeah. Rupert's Wood by any margin. Doesn't matter; they can win by a point, and uh, and and we beat Wallen. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot at stake. We need to, uh, it, for us to get the double chance. We need to rely on the team that hasn't won a game uh, to win, and we would have to beat the team that hasn't lost a game in order to get third spot. But finals can be any uh, yeah, exactly. Right. It, it's a different it's a different kind of football finals, bro. Absolutely spot on there, mate. Senior footy is going to be a, a, an interesting weekend. While uh, we're we're obviously not been able to, to make the finals, uh, we're unlikely to we we, we won't progress uh, any higher than eighth. Um, but what we can do is, if we do upstage Wallen, which there is a possibility that we could stop their run. Wallen, if, a victory for them and results go their way, they could potentially move up to third spot with, uh, if results sort of move that way. They've got the second best percentage in the competition. They're sitting uh, in fifth on 48 points, but they trail behind Riddle and Rupo, who are on 52 points with a far less percentage. So there's, uh, there's games involving them that could, uh, well, yeah. could go... I mean, Rup- Rupert's would have playing Rock Bank, so there's, they've got to rely on... Well, that's, that's all we can really hope for. We know we can't make finals, so why not make life difficult for other teams? I mean, it's... That's the, that's the only thing we can really do uh, as of the last sort of you know, week or so um, to close out the season. We can't make finals, but we can obviously you know alter the results of the finals, and that's um, that'd be a nice feeling going into next year. You know, clubs remember those games; they remember the clubs that that made their finals campaign more difficult. Um, and obviously, last game of the year, you know, we've got the men's mental health awareness day. We've got the first twilight game. It's, it's going to be a big spectacle, and it's definitely a marquee game and a marquee round um, for the club and obviously for Wallen as well. It's the last game of the year for them, so they'd want to have a have a big day, big day at the office as well. So um, I always have my fingers crossed that something something could happen in the, in the form of an op, of an upset, but um, you know. Footy, footy and netball is a funny game, mate. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's something we can guarantee. Let's talk some netball, and I'm going to leave one particular game till last, and I think you'll uh, you'll you'll see why as I'm going through. But let's start with the 19 and unders. Um, this is a battle between second and third on the ladder. The Hawks have uh, they've had a commanding run. They are arguably the second best team in the competition. They've taken all before them. They've got the uh, the second best attack in the comp. They've got a quality defence as well. The Hawks will be a, t- a, a tad too strong for Wallen, who are a formidable opponent in their own right. Um, but a bit, of, a bit of a gap between second and third, would you say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There, there is a significant gap. So I, I think with with Wallen, um, I don't see that any results, win, lose or draw, they're Later position will mean that they'll play Broadford week one of the final, so that'll, that'll be okay for them. So, for both clubs, it's a chance to sort of get a, a final tune up uh, ahead of the campaign, ahead in the finals. Um, I'm not sure who Macedon play off the bat at the moment because they or they play Melton Centrals. Uh, so we're doing this on the fly at the moment. So basically, yeah, for Wallen, there's there's still a little bit at stake. Uh, potential that they could play the uh, the they could play in the first elimination final, which will mean a victory for them. Will mean that they'll uh, they'll play the winner of Rupo and Wood and Heskett in week one of the final. So Hawks are looking pretty good, flexing their muscles. Come off a fifty nine goal win on the weekend, they're up and about. Definitely, and as you said, it's definitely you know a late a late tune up before the finals kick off. Um, you obviously want to get into that finals campaign with a lot of confidence and some sharp skills. So hopefully they can uh, definitely. Get some decent numbers in that goal shooting percentage that we've uh, been touching on this week. Spot on there, mate. Uh, B grade, we'll talk about. Uh, Wallen's currently sitting in fifth. They take on the Hawks, who are sitting in tenth. It's going to be a tough ask for the girls. For Wallen, uh, look, the, basically for them, they currently sit in fifth position on 36 points, a percentage ahead of Diggers Rest. So, they're, but they're still going to. They'll, they'll make finals anyway. Um, yep. This will be a chance for the girls who got within, uh, I think, 24 goals of six place diggers rest last weekend. I think if they can get within maybe between tw- uh, between maybe 20 goals and, and 25 goals, I think they'll be pretty satisfied yep. with that. 
Yeah, I mean, you've got to, you've got to do the best you can. And obviously, you don't want to go into into a game expecting to be smashed. So, if you can put up a decent fight and at least um, take it up to a team like like Wallen in in this quality B grade, then I don't see why um, why you can't go all the way. I mean, if you're getting within within uh, 15 to 10 goals, then you're within reach. So, you know, it's just it's just all about the start. You want to start off the game strong, and obviously keep yourself within reach so you don't have to chase all game but um, who knows mate I always say it every game I, well, who knows spot on there mate A grade netball uh, we take on third place Wallen a win for them will secure their third spot on the ladder uh, for the Hawks uh, looks like if we can win then we'll we'll still stay in eighth We'll, we'll likely, like the senior footballers, we will probably stay in eighth regardless of what results uh, transpires. Centrals are below us in ninth position. Expect the Cats to beat them. Uh, for the girls, it's just looking to get the right combinations right. And uh, and look, we're, we're jumping on the, the Gracie Reed bandwagon to win the uh, A-grade Best and Fairest Award and the Under-19 Best and Fairest Award. So it would she, be absolutely massive. She will solidify herself with a best encore performance in this game. Oh, surely. I mean, we've we've spoken about it now. So, I mean, if if you've got any uh, strings to pull, we can you know maybe have a bit of an influence with the voting system and see what we can uh, see what we can conjure up. But uh, nah, she'll um, she'll definitely she'll poll votes hundred um, percent, and it's just a matter of how many votes. So I'll have uh, I'll be watching that one pretty closely, and uh, that'll be absolutely massive. Imagine that a dual winner. Oh. BNF at the Wooden Footy Club. That's that's simply amazing. Come in your first season and just absolutely clean up, mate. That would be fantastic. Massive. Now, for obvious reasons, uh, as as we'll sort of relay it out, uh, we've left C grade to last. Now, this is the biggest oh. game for the entire weekend. We've been talking up C grade's chances of playing finals uh, for quite some time. Yeah, we've really pumped up the C grade this year. Mate. We have. Uh, unfortunately, the result against Diggers Rest on the weekend, who we expected to, to at least contest, uh, it was going to be a tough ask for them to win. But that's taken a little bit of percentage off, and, uh, and now we've bumped out to seventh spot. Now, Broadford on the weekend currently sit in sixth position on one a percentage of 142%. The buys mean you get the four points. So Broadford are going to be 44 points regardless. If we beat Wallen, who currently sit in fifth spot on a percentage of 124.77, we need, in order for us to make finals, we have to beat Wallen to pick up a, a, about 10.5%. So we probably have to win by a, a, quite an impressive margin, which is going to be we're going to be a tough ask. We're going to maybe have to win yeah. like 65 to 30 or something like that or, or some sort of margin like that in order to, to make finals. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a big ask, but it's definitely not impossible. It's, yeah, it's the fact that it's a possibility that that could change the, the outcome of the finals, which is massive. And, and hopefully, you know, if there are any C-grade girls listening to this or anyone on the coaching staff that is aware of the outcome that is required... You'd go into it. I'd, personally, I'd be, I'd be absolutely pumped. I'd, it would just give me that little bit extra adrenaline going into the game, and I'd, I'd just have that fire in my belly that I know that if we do not only win, but win convincingly, we can jump up the ladder and obviously have a, a more, a bit more confidence with our, with our finals campaign, and it will definitely make it, make it easier in terms of the matchups. I would have thought so. Certainly going to be massive, uh, massive chance. It's going to be massive, mate. Almost as massive as the October twenty five presentation night, which we're calling it early. Gracie Reed will be the first ever dual premiership best. <laughs> uh, sorry, dual best and fairest. She could end up being a, a premiership player by the end of the season as well. The way the oh, nineteen she, she might just jump over the footy and she'll probably get a spot in the A's. I reckon the one. Sorry. Oh, she's been an electrifying form. This young gun just. Blessed with talent, and the club is very privileged to have her, as she's very privileged to be part of the club too. It's magnificent. So, uh, 
Make sure you uh, you register your interest through all the contacts of the club. October 25, that is over at Tabcorp Park over at Melton. A stunning venue. That's where the uh, Junior Best and Ferris is currently taking place as we go to recording at the moment. Um, and to give you a bit of an idea of capacity, we want everyone tied with the Junior, Senior and Masters Club to get down there. Uh, I know Goldfields, they had 534 people there, a record uh, attendances last year. I would take a stab and say they've broken that again this year and bursting at the seams. They've had to have people sit out on the balcony. It's going to be a great night, mate. Um, I know I know plenty of people will be keen to get there and be be a part of it. It's going to be a terrific occasion. Yeah, definitely. It always is. It's always a good night out at the Prezzo night. Um, from, from recent history, I remember they've definitely got some live music because obviously got the beers flowing and the food the food being chowed down all night but um yeah it's obviously a great night and night um will we'll be will we be seeing the stat man in person at the present night that's that's the question that i've got um i'm not sure if you can answer it just yet but I'll, be, uh, I'll be hoping i'll be hoping for a uh little trip down memory lane, mate. Oh, mate, well, we'll, we'll see how we go. We'll see if the uh, the boss will uh, let, let, let me finish work a little bit early or maybe a day early and see if I can uh, I can fly down for... Uh, I'll, for... I'll, I'll put the pressure on you, everyone. <laughs> if, if, if we don't see Yendi at the presentation night, He's been kicked from the Woodhead Football Club. Oh, mate! <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you've got to have it. You, you've, you've got to stick the boots into a CEO of a national company, mate. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He'll just get a promotion on his uh, what is it, Australian? What, tell me about what you're doing. Oh, mate! Yeah, yeah. No, so for, for, I appreciate the support of everyone that's been, uh, yeah. Just back home, um, have been been get, given a bit of support. So uh, 12 months ago, I had a crack at a job for a media role at Squash Australia, um, and uh, and only a couple of weeks ago, oh, I had the pleasure of uh, applying for the job and and picking it up again. So um, so I just missed out last time. So I've had a I had another crack, and I'm uh, I'm, I'm back into it. So um, I know I know I know. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, I'm clapping now for anyone that's wondering. You can't see me. <laughs> That's the sound is me clapping. Ah, <laughs> uh, cheers, mate. Well, it's good. Look, it's good to uh, good to have some dollars coming into the account, mate. So, um, yeah, no, sure. it's all, all a little bit of fun, but it's great working for uh, for a national company and as as I've well, a, a national sport. And as I've highlighted to to pods throughout the journey and and the club as well, it, the 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 reason I have been successful in this role is purely one hundred and ten percent because of the Wood and Hesker Football Netball Club. So it's because of the buy in. Of uh, of all the volunteers and the support uh, to help create uh, something special that the club has uh, has got and will continue to carry forward in the future. So, um, and I that w- when I mentioned this, the the great success that this club was having, it certainly was a standout point in the interview. And it's something when I be, when I do communicate with the state, I can tell them that the enormous potential of group of volunteers who don't get paid to do what they do. Uh, yep. what you can achieve to draw, draw a tremendous profile within your sporting club and organisation. So there is yeah, certainly sure. a blueprint there. Um, the work that's been executed by everyone at the Wooden Hesker Football Netball Club, trust me, there there will be a lot of that implemented in discussions with the, the head body of, of Squash Australia and, and its state bodies as well. And that's, that's people power. Yep. That goes to show just how tremendous... Tremendously outstanding this club has been in order to grow. And we've seen that, as we spoke about earlier on the show, mate, to to get behind uh, mental health on such short notice, but to really push it and not half-ass it, just go all in as a testament to everyone having the image uh, of or having the, the same drive to get the best out of the club and make it a real good community environment. That's that's what it's all about. I think, yeah, I think we've got to realise not only... You and I, but you know all the all the players and, and fans of like that. We are very lucky to have such an involved, uh, such an involved uh, club. And our, as you said, our, our social media is. I don't think people realise they obviously can't see the work that goes behind the scenes. But you know, you, you're not even. You're, how many kilometres away are you? Uh, Fifteen hundred, mate. <laughs> Fifteen hundred kilometres, and for anyone that that keeps up to date with our social media. I reckon about 75% of the, the posts on Facebook, uh, Instagram, 
and all the other social media outlets that we've got all our all our newsletters and behind the scenes this, this podcast itself it's all done by by Yindi so um the, the work that you've been doing this year, mate, even though you haven't been around, has been absolutely massive, and it's definitely motivated me to to do some of my own stuff and um, join the club and have an impact of my own. So it's been absolutely massive from you, mate, and I hope that we can continue this work through through the final series and uh, into into next season. Oh no, I appreciate the kind words, mate. Uh, and the beauty about uh, doing this podcast is um, and and. Going back to my Highlands FM days, uh, we used to treat sport on radio. Whenever we used to talk radio, we used to sit back. Uh, so the, the late, great Kenny Helmore, who's synonymous with the uh, Woodend uh, community in more ways than one, we used to sit back on the radio and have a couple of light refreshments in our hand and, uh, and, and talk footy and, and then all the other sport. Every, uh, every time, every Wednesday we catch up, I, I sit back with a light refreshment and uh, we chat away and it's you know you're catching up with a mate and you you you're talking something you're passionate about and that that passion's sure. echoed throughout the community about some of the uh, just just in remarkable ways. Exactly, mate, and I think we can both say with with complete and utter confidence that that what we've done this year with the club and in the Instagram and uh, and all the other sort of social media outlets that we've been. Uh, developing throughout the season i think we can confidently say that this is only the beginning you yeah, spot on there mate uh appreciate all all, all the kinds words oh uh, no it is time to wrap things up here on the yep. uh the 11th of edition the end of the home and away season of course we've got plenty more action coming up over the next few weeks we'll be talking up the uh the how the juniors performed on the weekend so 945 uh, under 11 a uh, footballers taking on Rupo down at Romsey Park on the main oval, and then over on the netball courts from three o'clock, we'll uh, we'll be taking on uh, Gisborne rookies in the top division of seventeen Division One. That's what it's all about. Jackie boy or Lazarus, thanks so much for your company, mate. Always enjoy uh, our Wednesday no nights sort of chatting mate. away, mate. And let's not forget to thank our, uh, our sponsor this weekend. If you've got a, if you've got any more kind words to say for this wonderful company, which I <laughs> think you do. Ah, T. Uh, Edgar's get. Out, if you can squeeze out a bit more for these uh, for these legends, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Oh, R. T. Edgar's uh, quality customer service. They are genuine people. They're passionate about people. They're passionate about finding the right house for you or finding the right client for you to to move in your house. Quality service. As I've said, uh, I've gone with them before while renting a house, and they were really disappointed to to learn that we were uh, that we had to finish up. I uh, did get a hug from one of their customers, uh, or sorry, one of the, the girl in customer service who did a lot of great work with. She was really sad to see us leave. That's and that was genuine, um, and it's the genuine community people supporting community people, uh, reflective of what we have of our juniors, seniors, and masters clubs in the region. And that's uh, that's one way to wrap up episode eleven of the uh, of the Woodend podcast, Beyond the Nest. Uh, thank you, everyone, for. For tuning in, listening, it's uh, it's been a bit of a it's been a bit of a uh, free flowing one. We haven't really had much to work with, but we've we've made do again, Yendi. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next week on Beyond the Nest.